Welcome to Green Numbers Data Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Census API to geocode a list of street addresses and read the returned values into a pandas data frame. The Census Bureau provides an API that allows you to submit a list of street addresses and receive geocoded values in return. Those values include the latitude, longitude, state FIPS code, county FIPS code, census tract, and census block. There's a lot of documentation that describes the format of the address file you need to submit. Instructions for submission such as selecting the time period when the address range was captured and the format of the file you receive in return. You can find links to this information in this video's description. In this video, I'm going to show you what the street address file should look like, how to use the API in Python to submit the file, and how to read the return data into a pandas data frame. Here are the address file specifications. This is a comma delimited file and is comprised of five columns. Unique ID, street number and name, city, state, and zip code. Note that you don't necessarily need city, state, and zip code, but omitting them may reduce the likelihood the address will be geocoded. Also, if you omit any of these values, you still need to include a comma so that the information for the rest of the file is in alignment with the delimiters. Here's the file we'll use in the Python code. Again, the columns are ID, address, city, state, and zip code. And there are 10 addresses listed in this file from various locations in the United States. But as I just mentioned, you can leave out, for example, state like this. But if you do this, you need to leave in the comma. That ensures the zip code aligns with the zip code column instead of the state column. But let's undo this. So here we're looking at our Python code in Jupyter Notebook. If you don't know what this is, I encourage you to download and install Anaconda. The Anaconda package, in addition to installing Python, includes a number of useful applications, including Jupyter Notebook. So let's take a look at this first block. In order to make a post to the API, we need to import the request package. We need to import pandas so we can read the data we receive into a data frame. We need to import the IO package so we can convert the response object into something that can be read into a data frame. And we need to import the CSV package because the geocoded values we receive from the API will be comma delimited. In order to make a post to the API, we need three arguments. The first is the URL of the census geocoder. This is the same for everyone and we save this URL in the variable URL. The next argument is the address file that contains our street addresses that we want geocoded. That's this information right here we just looked at. This is a format specified in the API documentation, and we save this information in the variable files. The third argument is comprised of two pieces of information the benchmark, which is the time period the Census Bureau created their snapshot of the data, and the vintage, which is the census or survey that the data relate to. For example, census2010 underscore census2010 are the address ranges from the 2010 census at the time of the 2010 census. Here's a look at a user interface that I'm going to talk about in more detail a little bit later, but we can see what some of the benchmark options are. We're using the public AR current benchmark, which will always give us the most recent anytime we run the code. Here are the vintage options. We're using the current underscore current option, which again will always give us the most recent vintage when we run the code. And we save the benchmark and the vintage in the payload variable. And here's where we post the URL, file, and payload using the post method from requests. The data are saved in the s variable. So let's run this block and we can see that it ran without error and the geocoded data have been saved in the variable s. So let's use a type function to see what kind of object s is. We see that it's a response object which can't be read into a data frame as it is. This block reads the geocoded data into a data frame we can use and manipulate 
And in order to read S into a data frame, we need to use the text attribute to decode S and string IO to convert the response object into a file-like object, which is what the read CSV method is expecting. These are comma delimited data, so the delimiter is a comma. And there's no header information in the geocoded data, so header equals none. We're using quoting equals CSV dot quote all to quote all fields in case there are any embedded commas we don't want to be interpreted as a delimiter. The data frame we're creating is called df. Then we use the pandas option context method to make our data prettier when we print it using printdf. So let's run this code and we can see what the geocoded data look like. We'll go over these in more detail shortly, but you can see that the columns don't have a header. So let's fix that. In this block, we add column headers to our data frame. To do this, we use the columns attribute to assign our column names in list format. These column names can be found in the Census API technical documentation. So let's run this code. No errors. Now, when we print df, we see the column names. And when we use the type function on df, we see that df is a data frame. So let's take a look at the output. We can see that the start of the file is just the address information we posted to the API. Then we see the match indicator. This tells us whether a match was found or not. We can see that most of the addresses matched, but there were three that show no match. You can see that these are less conventional address types. For example, one Caesars Palace Drive and one East 161st Street. You may need to try some addresses out and see what geocodes and what doesn't. Then standardize your address data so it conforms to patterns that maximize the likelihood a match will be found. For example, we could replace the word one in these two addresses with the number one. So let's go to our data file, replace this with the one, and this with the one, save it. Let's go back and run this all again here. And then read it into a data frame. Add our columns. And then print it out again. And we can see that one Caesars Palace Drive still didn't match. But one East 161st Street did. The next column is match type. We see that addresses that matched, matched exactly except 1060 West Addison Street, which didn't include street in our original file. The address out column shows what address can be found in the census data. This gives us some good information we can use to standardize our data. For example, we can see that address out abbreviates street and avenue, and it appears to abbreviate north, east, south, and west. By doing a little detective work, we can increase the likelihood our addresses match. Next, we see longitude and latitude. Tiger Edge is the unique ID for the edge the address falls on in the MAF Tiger database. We also see the street side, FIPS state code, FIPS county code, census tract, and census block. So we're back here again. I, I just wanted to quickly show you that you don't need to use the API to geocode our address file. We can also do this using the address batch geocoder URL, which is this. So in here, we can choose our file, select our benchmark, let's keep it public AR current, and our vintage, again, current, current. We can also see that batch files may not exceed 10,000 records. That's also true when we use our Python code as well. So if you have more than 10,000 records, you'll have to break the file up into pieces that are 10,000 or less. So let's get the results. And the file will download in our default browser location. And when we open it, we see the same information we found in our data frame. And that's it for this video. Hopefully this video has given you enough information to geocode your address data and import the file into a data frame. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to get more content. Thanks for watching.